Polycythemia vera is one of uh, myeloproliferative neoplasms, which uh, is manifested primarily by the increase in red blood cells. Many patients have high white cell count and platelets. The issue here is that uncontrolled blood cell growth increases the risk of a thrombosis. And because of cardiovascular events, thrombosis, and in some cases also hemorrhage, these patients may have increased morbidity and even mortality. Although overall expectations of a life is close to normal, there is some statistical difference between the patients with PV and normal population. The main cause of death is complications related to thrombosis and bleeding, cardiovascular events. Some patients can progress to myelofibrosis, small percentage of patients, or even to acute myeloid leukemia, that's very rare, and that certainly affects their life expectancy. Diagnosis of polycythemia vera is a tricky business sometimes, and this actually led to a modification of a diagnostic process recently in April of this year when a publication from international group that leads the efforts to properly diagnose patients with hematological malignancies published new guidelines. So at the moment, these three guidelines are really emphasized as necessary for diagnosis to be made. And that would include several factors. There are three major factors. The one is elevation in the red blood cell count. The second is performance of the bone marrow biopsy that would show too many cells in the bone marrow. And the third is identification of the molecular marker, like a JAK2 V617F mutation, present in about 95% of the patients, or JAK2 exon 12 mutation that is present in about 2 or 3% of the patients. These are three major criteria for diagnosis of polycythemia vera. And the fourth minor criteria is decrease in erythropoietin. This is a growth factor for red blood cells that is typically very low, low normal or below normal in patients with polycythemia vera because it's not necessary. Red blood cells grow without control. Body recognizes the uncontrolled growth of red blood cells and shuts down the production of erythropoietin, a growth factor for red blood cells, so it's very low. That's a minor fourth criteria for diagnosis. Now, let's emphasize one part of this which is important. The threshold on a red blood cell count, which is measured by hemoglobin or hematocrit, has been decreased in the new guidelines for making diagnosis because over time, specifically over the last five or six years, we recognize that many patients may not even have that high red blood cell count that typically polycythemia vera patients may have. Some patients have somewhat lower numbers in red blood cells because they develop iron deficiency, which is a common finding in polycythemia vera. Iron is utilized by red blood cells, and many patients are discovered to have a somewhat lower red blood cell count with iron deficiency without uh, detectable or very low erythropoietin and still have a PV. So one needs to be very cautious and understand the diagnostic process and all the required parts. When treating a patient with polycythemia vera, the goals of therapy is to reduce the risk of thrombosis, the development of cardiovascular or cerebrovascular disease. Unfortunately, right now, uh, we're unclear as to how to reduce the risk of transformation, transformation to myelofibrosis, for example, or transformation to acute leukemia. Those disease-modifying factors really, for right now, cannot be uh, controlled. So the focus of therapy needs to be to reduce the risk of thrombosis and cardiovascular mortality and morbidity. And therefore, initiation of aspirin, uh, low-dose aspirin has been showed, uh, shown on multiple randomized studies to be uh, advantageous, with one exception. Those are those patients with a very high platelet count who have an acquired von Willebrand uh, uh, disorder. It's very important to test for those patients, specifically in patients with a platelet count greater than a million. And then uh, the development and strict control of the hematocrit has been shown to reduce the risk of not only thrombosis, but both cardiovascular and cerebrovascular uh, morbidity. So I'd like to turn and talk about challenges associated with polycythema vera. There are a couple of things that I've encountered in my practice that I think is more widespread. Uh, the first one is in some rural areas without a specialist like a hematologist, these diseases are being managed by their primary care physician. And so I think it's very important for these patients who have polycythema vera to at least visit a specialist at one point and then collaborate with the primary care physician to manage their disease. Because it's easy to forget that there's very, um, there's hematocrit goals in order to reduce the patient's risk from thrombotic events. And I think that 
is something that we need to work with our uh, primary care specialists and um, other physicians to help manage these patients better. Another challenge um, that we need to do better on is symptom control. So even though the patient's hematic control is uh, optimal, some, some of these patients have pretty significant symptoms such as quality of life uh, issues with pruritus or itching, fatigue, and also vasomotor symptoms. So these are symptoms that are hard to control. Uh, often this, the, the treatment that we use or the drugs that we use will actually cause side effects or impact their quality of life in other ways. And so that's an unmet need to really improve these symptoms that are associated with polycythemia vera. And we probably need to do better in monitoring their symptoms using, again, these MPN symptom scoring tools to help monitor how much this is impacting their quality of life and their day-to-day -day living.